This is Andrew Shu. I will talk about Cornelia Aronswab's personal experience using historical maps and pictures. Cornelia was interviewed by the USC Show Foundation at year 1997 about her personal story during World War II. This map shows her trace and those arrows indicate where she was. In the conclusion of this presentation I will once again show you this map. This timeline in the top shows which city she was in in the year she was there. The bottom picture shows Cornelia when she was interviewed by USC Show Foundation. The source is the 1997 testimony from the Show Foundation's Visual History Archive. This is Cornelia's timeline. It has maps on the top and bottom of the timeline. This is the map of Bergen op Zoom in 1951 taken from a U.S. Army Service map. It is the cultural center with a museum that has a picturesque courtyard, paintings, period rooms, and temporary exhibitions. This is where she was born and she didn't remember much. Her family moved to Amsterdam in 1942 to avoid the Germans. The reasons was that Nazi Luftwaffe were bombing Rotterdam and Rotterdam is near Bergen op Zoom. So they had to move out. In Amsterdam her family had a store with barracks and they assisted other Jewish people to hide over there but her father was caught doing that so he went to jail. In 1942 her family decided that Amsterdam is unsafe for her so she was sent to Rotterdam to be with Anna. 1942 is the year in which Nazi Germany has the most territory and Jewish prosecution is the highest in Amsterdam. The important event is when Cornelia is boarding the train from Amsterdam to Rotterdam an SS officer tried to inspect if there's any Jewish people. When he saw her he said, this is a nice Aryan girl, when in fact she is a Jewish girl. This event probably saved her life. This shows the segment of timeline that Cornelia was in Rotterdam. The extent of her stay in Rotterdam was 1941 to 1944. She was five year old when she got there. Rotterdam was bombed pretty heavily by the Nazi Luftwaffe. There were several bombing raids. This map roughly shows the area in which Cornelia and other kids wandered around right after 1940. Cornelia was too young to remember where in the city she was in. The red area shows locations of buildings destroyed in the May 1940 bombing. They were under urban intervention at the time. Cornelia was under care of a guardian named Anna. Anna is also Jewish. She had a daughter named Karen. Usually Cornelia and other young kids could walk outside in broad daylight. They had to go home whenever it's dark. One day in 1943 Karen got captured so Anna decided that it is time for Cornelia to leave. Anna sent Cornelia to Fleeringen where another Jewish family was hiding and accepting more Jewish children. These are pictures of Rotterdam before and after the German bombed the city in May 1940. The city looks similar to the right picture when Cornelia arrived in 1941, because most buildings were down and could not be rebuilt that fast. The empty square in the right picture were originally buildings before the bombing. The left picture shows the same place. These two pictures help to illustrate how badly damaged Rotterdam was before Cornelia arrived. This village is close to Germany as the top right corner shows the border between Netherlands and Germany. The village was too small so that it was not labeled in the U.S. Army Service map of 18 kilometers by 12 kilometer scale. Cornelia's living condition there was really poor because she shared a house with five other children. She was so malnutritioned that she walked all the way back to Rotterdam to find Anna. This picture support the fact that Fleeringen was a small village with few houses and lots of grass. This just shows how long the distance between Fleeringen and Rotterdam is. Google map estimated that it will take 38 hours non-stop to walk all the way. So it means that Cornelia may have slept somewhere between the two cities. Maybe it was why she got chickenpox when she returned to Rotterdam. The trip was very long but Cornelia was so desperate that she felt like this walk is shorter than reality. When Cornelia returned to Rotterdam and found Anna, Anna thought Cornelia was in a poor physical condition. Anna diagnosed and found that Cornelia had chickenpox. Originally Anna wouldn't allow Cornelia to sleep in her house, but due to her chickenpox Anna allowed Cornelia to stay. After she recovered, Mr. Hertz took her to reunite with her grandparents. The timeline shows the year and location she was in. Cornelia entered Harlem in 1945. Harlem has seen many of its Jewish people captured by the Nazis. 
In 1944, it was used as a defensive line for Nazis. This map shows that Harlem and Heemstede are very close. Both Harlem and Amsterdam were big cities with its own metropolitan areas. In August 1944, Mr. Hertz took her to Wormervier because he has been hiding her grandma, aunt-in-law and the aunt-in-law's husband since 1940. After staying in Wormervier for a few days, Mr. Hertz drove all of them to Harlem because Cornelia's parents had been hiding there. While they were all in Harlem, they rely on Cornelia's dad to provide food. After the war was over, her family was allocated a home in Heemstede by the Holland government. Her immediate family left the house for her aunt-in-law to live and moved back to Amsterdam. Cornelia moved to Bondi Beach in 1951. She has lived here since 1951. This was also the place in which the USC Show Foundation interviewed her. The beach is in the suburb of Sydney, Australia. When she was being interviewed she was 61 years old. So that's it. Thank you for your attention.